I'm Taylor. I'm going to talk about creating a capital deployment schedule for a venture fund. So the easy way to create that is to not, right? Just forecast the fund on an overall basis and not worry about what the deployment schedule is over time. Figure out how much money you have to invest, uh, your total capital minus your associated fees based upon the time frame you think so the, the fund's going to operate. Uh, invested capital has earns a return. Right? Usually you assume like a gross exit multiple get the proceeds. Uh, and then it's, it's simple to figure out kind of the rest of the flow of the model from there. But what you're not doing is you're not trying to figure out, okay, well, when does new inv new investments or when does fall on investments or when do fees, not when do they actually happen over time and not worrying about the cash flows per year. The next step up basically is to actually do that, right? And so in a lot of models, I create capital deployment schedules, creating a forecast of capital over time. Usually the key to, the key to that is what I'm trying to do is like one, uh, forecast out all the different fees. Like, so what are the schedule for organizational, operational, and management fees over time based on my parameters? And then two, how am I thinking about uh, my allocation to new and follow on? Typically, the easy way to do that is to uh, figure out what your total invested capital is. So in these models, I use kind of assumptions for what my kind of cost structure is, what my management fees are, what my management fees recycling is going to be. And I get to this idea of like to the total invested capital is going to be. And I say, okay, cool. Okay. Now of that, a part of that's going to be allocated new, part of it's going to be allocated to follow. And usually my models, I create like an assumption so I can easily determine like how much is going to be new, how much we follow. Then I say, okay, what's an investment time period? What's the time period over which I'm going to invest into new checks? So given the amount of my total invested capital that's allocated to new, I then just deploy that over time into new investments. So you create a forecast over here and I have a schedule for like new investments per period. The simple way is just to assume it's, you know, total capital divided by, you know, four years for this example. You can create more complicated methodologies and I've done that in the past for in a number of way, in a number of ways to say, hey, maybe I scale, I, I scale up over time in my investments at the beginning and I scale up over time so my deployment of new capital goes up over time, for example. That's a rational assumption. Um, there are other ways to create uh, assumptions around that, but, but for simplicity purposes, oftentimes I just assume it's an average uh, over that new investment time period. And then you say for follow-ons, okay, well, how do I figure out how, when my deployment schedule for follow-ons happens? Then I, I usually use, there's a, there's, a, there's a simple way to do this, which is say, hey, let's just, I assume I'm gonna do one round. And actually in this model, specifically how this is how it works, just if, if there's an allocation of capital to follow on, and it just says that, hey, I'm probably gonna do, uh, on average, my capital is gonna be deployed uh, one year, one to two years after the original investment. Uh, so I just take the amount of capital that was allocated to new investment, and then figure out well, how much of that portion, that, what are the appropriate portion that would be allocated to follow on investment per year, put it a year, one to two years afterwards and create time scale from that. And so basically this is pretty simple. I have a schedule of new investment and then I have a schedule of follow-on investments. A more complicated way to do that is to use the same uh, the same core structure, but to develop a more detailed view of your portfolio construction in terms of the rounds you'll, you'll invest into and the timings of them. So in like the more advanced models I have, I have a create, I create like a portfolio construction model, which says here's the rounds that are happening. I figure out what my pro rata, my pro rata availability, or the amount I have to invest in future rounds is going to be, what the timing of those future rounds is going to be. And then I create a scale which says, okay, maybe, maybe if I invest into multiple rounds, then I can figure out what's my deployment of full schedule of capital based upon that original first new investment I put into. And what that does is it creates the schedule of new and following capital, which is going to, you know, by nature result in your invested capital. Um, that's a simple way to create a capital kind of budgeting schedule uh, over time. Uh, the one couple of things to think about as it comes into like recycling. So it's very common for funds to do manage recycling of management fees. Some fees will do. Some funds will do. Uh, evergreen funds, for example, will do much more recycling. They'll recycle all their proceeds kind of back into um, for a much longer kind of time period. Um, most funds that just do most uh, don't do proceeds recycling. They just do management fees recycling. In which case, you're just going to recycle a portion or percentage of the management fees that the, the that the management company's taken out. That usually happens. It's a usually a smaller amount and over a shorter time frame as whatever is indicated under the limited partnership agreement with the LPA. Um, so usually, what I try and do in this case is I make an assumption of what the total amount of management fees recycling is going to be. And I actually use that to factor into my overall number of uh, my overall like, invested capital I have. So take out the fees and then add that the that recycled fees kind of back to the total amount of invested capital I have. So I've I've effectively like priced in I've I've budgeted for what I think my future recycling is going to be back into like what I think my original 
investments can be over the time period. So I'm accounting for that in my in my forecast of new capital. Um, it's an additional complexity that obviously becomes harder once you start forecasting and things over time, um, but you know it can be valuable if you're really trying to think through how the cash flows happen over time. Questions? Ask anytime.